Good morning, coin jammers. I'm going to show you a wonderful set this morning um, of one of the masterpieces in silver. This is the 2000 masterpieces in silver, and it is coins of the 20th century showing the monarchs that were on the coins of the 20th century. It's one of my absolute favorite um, sets. But I'm also so showing you this um, almost as a warning. Now, this set actually was purchased uh, bubble wrapped, well, not bubble wrapped, cellophane wrapped. It was fully sealed. As you can see, it looks looks all right. And obviously in the photos, it, um, it looked okay. So we thought it would be pristine. It wasn't. So I'm going to show you what can happen even um, if it is wrapped and not stored correctly um, in a controlled environment if there's um, uh, dampness around. Now, I'm still going to keep this set. Obviously, it cannot be sold in this condition. Now, the first thing you'll notice, the box isn't, isn't fabulous, but you can see it has a lot of mould. Now, when we receive anything like this, the first thing we do is we separate anything that's mouldy from the coins. That to me, that box is not redeemable. Then we have the, the inside box. Now, again, you'd think because it was all wrapped and um, you know not opened that it would be in good condition. Again, it is an old set, you have to remember that, but because of the way it has been stored, the box itself has started to disintegrate as well which is such a shame because if you've watched a few of my videos, I'm very much a packaging girl. I love the packaging. And then inside, again, there is, uh, with this, we're going to throw it away because it could be infected. And even our, oh, if I can get it out. Even our wonderful little pamphlet has um, is disintegrating in a terrible way. So we will have to keep this all separate from the coins, which is a little disappointing, but the person who sold it wouldn't have known that this is the case. Um, they may have got it from somewhere else and not realized that it wasn't stored in an optimum place but um, something uh, to be aware of. Um, I wouldn't buy something that has been sealed if it is quite an old set. I would actually um, you know, ensure that you can get something that's, that's been open so you can see the condition of everything. Now, fortunately, the coins are fabulous, which is the most important thing. But this set is, is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Big royal fan, so um, for me, this is great. This uh, pamphlet gives you lots of information about about each, well, not lots, because there's just way too much to contain in one book, but gives you uh, plenty of information about all of the monarchs of the 20th century and the coins that we're replicating um, within here. So we're just gonna have a, a wee quick look. Now, this set sort of retails for about uh, 150 to 180, depending on, on where you can get it from. And if you have a look, that's a lot of silver. Even the, the plaque, itself is silver too. So it really isn't a, a bad, uh, uh, you know, a bad purchase. Now we will actually, if we can see in here, we're going to actually remove these from the boxes. Even the box is, uh, is moldy, but we've just kept it in there to, to show you what to look out for. Now, there are people who say you can clean coins. There are people who can say you can clean the boxes. My advice is get them away from mould. You do not want any contamination or, or the coins to, to suffer. I also wouldn't clean your coins, just by the way. Um, right, so let's have a look at this wonderful masterpieces in silver. Now, as you can see, with terrible lighting, there are, you see there? There are five coins there. So we'll go through each of them. Right, so let's have a look at the coins themselves. The first one is our Queen Victoria. And this is representing the 1901 sovereign. 
Now, she's been on the throne since 1837 and only died actually in uh, 1901. So we were lucky to get her into, into this series. She survived just long enough. She was known as the uh, grandmother of, of Europe and at 2000 was the longest reigning monarch. Okay. So you can see the legends all the way around the coins here and it basically is just the royal titles um, uh, by the grace of God, King of all, uh, well, Queen of all Britons, Defender of the Faith, and then you can see the um, IND and IMP there, which is the Empress of India, which this coin, um, the 1901 Sovereign, was the first time to include that, the Empress of India. Obviously, that um, that title will change over time with political and geographic changes, um, which is quite interesting. Now, this is uh, considered a veiled head type, or the old head style. And um, in Australia, there were no silver or bronze coins. So this portrait was restricted uh, to just the gold uh, uh, sovereigns and half sovereigns and was struck in the colonial royal branch mints of Sydney, Melbourne and Perth. So longest reigning monarch at that time. We'll get back to that, but uh, very nice one. And this one is actually a $2 coin. So my fingers are fluffing up the heating up the coin there, um, a, a $2 coin, which uh, for $2 collectors would be quite interesting as well. So that's our Queen Victoria. So we'll move on to King Edward VII. Now this one is representing the 1910 Florin. And um, despite the fact that he came to the throne in 19, uh, 1910, in 1901, there were no coins for uh, King Edward the, the Seventh until 1902. Now, uh, these were gold coins struck with, um, uh, there were, sorry, can't speak today. There were gold coins struck with the bald head portrait, but these were technically British coins and Australia seemed to uh, prefer the crowned head coins. So when they introduced um, their own coins in 1910, a crown portrait was chosen and only silver coins were, were issued depicting uh, King Edward VII um, issued in Australia. And by the time they realised that they needed other uh, coins, which is um, quite useful, um, by the time they were minted and sent out to Australia from the Royal Mint, King Edward had actually died. So a bit of a bit of a shortcoming there. And this coin is actually a 20 cent piece. Again, these are all silver coins, but uh, there you go. So that one is uh, King Edward the uh, the seventh. So now we're going to take a look at George. Oh, there we go. So this is King George V, and this is representing the 1911 florin. And there were actually two effigies for uh, King George V designed. The bareheaded coins were used in the British coin. A bareheaded effigy was used in the British coins, and the crowned head again seems to be favoured in colonies and in Australia. Um, this is a, an Australian coin. Now King George reigned from 1910 to 1936. And then, which is um, really significant for um, for coins itself, we had King Edward VIII. Now, as you can see, King Edward doesn't actually feature in here. Now, King Edward VIII, a very controversial figure, he had a 10-month reign and no circulating coins were struck for him. He actually abdicated as he wanted to marry and he had already been married. Uh, the church didn't believe in divorce, blah da 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 So... Um, then we moved on to King George the Sixth. There we go. Now, as you can see, he is actually facing the same way as King George oh, the Fifth. Now, you may or may not know, but every time a um, a new monarch comes in, they face a different way. Might suck if you have a preferred side, but um, you have to face a certain way. But it was decided that this was acceptable because of um, King Edward the Third, uh, Third, Eighth. Um, so he was able to face in the same direction as King George the Fifth. 
So it, it does and it doesn't follow, follow the tradition, uh, depending on how much of a stickler you really are. So um, King George VI actually had his coronation on the same, uh, uh, the same date that um, King Edward VIII was supposed to have his coronation. So he basically just took over. And um, the bareheaded portrait was used in British and Australian coins this time, which is a bit of a change rather than the crowned one. Um, and the crowned um, effigy was used in other colonies such as India. Now, in uh, 1949, when India gained independence, this legend um, royal title, IND, IMP, actually was deleted. So that's um, quite an interesting change as well. So the coins are actually reflecting the changes in history as they, as they occur, which is wonderful. And that one is our 50 cent coin. So now we're moving on to our longest reigning monarch now, Queen Elizabeth II. There we go. Now, this was um, a little bit of a controversial step for Queen Elizabeth II. Um, in the 1953 Florum, they deleted the, um, the legend B-R-O-M-N, which means of all Britons, but they also deleted FD, the Defender of the Faith, and this caused a huge uproar. Um, the church uh, decried the coins and the Royal Mint had to act very quickly to, um, to actually amend the coin. Now, back in these days, moving quickly is, well, not that quick. So um, they managed to, by 1954, re-add the legend of FD, um, to the royal visit Florin, so everyone was happy again. But other coins, you know, gradually far up followed. Um, but it, it did take a couple of years to get that all organised. Again, we've got a bareheaded portrait there. Uh, the 1953 Florin was actually also struck at the Melbourne Mint. So lovely coin there. And that one's another 20 cent piece. So we've got some wonderful um, pieces there in this um, Monarchs of the, uh, of the 20th century. So have a look at this set. It has got a lot of silver contained within it. As I did say, be careful when you buy certain products. Um, I would recommend you actually can see the condition of the coins and the packaging before you purchase. A big um, lesson learned for us, although frankly, I still love the set. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that. Bit of a short one there. And uh, subscribe to Coin Jam because we have much, much more on the way. And we will see you soon. Bye.